Kelly. In the last video, we were looking at how other people have done similar things, mainly MDN. And I went around, did a whole bunch of research, tried to figure out how, the, how other people did it. Eventually, I landed on a combination of what MDN did as well as another popular library on M NPM. M MDN and NPM. It's a little bit confusing, isn't it? So what are we doing in this video? I have forgotten. I'm wearing the same shirt. We were putting our functions, our console log and error functions inside of our React component and seeing what happens when we press the run button on our code and see if it actually outputs something that we could use. All right, we're back at our little window thing ding. So let's do our const thing ding thing. Good, we got nothing. Do we have any errors? Have, have things exploded? They have not exploded, confirmed. Very well. Now let's try the craziest thing in the world. I don't think it will work. It worked! For those of you who this doesn't happen to very often, enjoy these moments. I definitely do. This is one of the, one of the things that really excites me about software development is those moments when you don't expect things to work and then they magically just come together and start working. The next thing I wanted to do here is set error. Uh, okay, we need to do the same formatting thing. So how about this? Actually, no, we can just call console error. That should do it. So let's do console error. <laughs> Other things are calling console. That's actually not good. We'll have to figure out a better way of doing that. This is an error. Error, error. How's that? Dang, I, did, what? I didn't get the console error. Why? Because I'm not displaying the error anywhere. All right, let's, let's quickly add that. Uh, error. 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 No. no, 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 no. Okay, it's, it's doing the rebuild. Wait for it to finish rebuilding. Ding, this is an error. Perfect. Uh, the last thing I want to do is uh, throw new error. This is another error. Plea. Yes, it works. Okay, so the next thing that we'd like to tackle is making this thing look a little prettier. The first thing that comes to mind is do we want to actually use Code Mirror or do we want to use some other thing? Is it possible to create something that is even more lightweight than Code Mirror? All right, I went through a whole bunch of different options. It seems like for short code snippets, Code Mirror seems to be the best way to go. Apparently, Code Mirror has a version 6. Code mirror version six, looking good, buddy. You need some better tutorials. Maybe I gotta make some. When in doubt, go straight to the source code. Much better, look at that. This is exactly what I wanted. Ah, We can now replace our text area with something that's a little bit more expressive, something that looks a little nicer. But before I forget, let's just save our progress and put it here. So let's just quickly do our conventional commit. We'll say feet, uh, this is going to be JavaScript strings, uh, added console log and error captured. Oh, and I gotta put the packages into eh, line feeds. I hate CRLF. Why would you have a carriage return and not feed the line? <laughs> Head explodes. Um, all right, so we're gonna make a new component here. The component that we're going to create is something that is gonna replace this text area here. We're gonna go make a new folder called components. That seems nice. And then we'll make a new folder inside that folder called editor. And inside that folder, we are going to create a TypeScript file that is a JTSX file, which is going to be index. TS. There we go. The first thing that we want to do is we want to grab all of the things that we need from Code Mirror. What are the libraries? System guide? Let's try that. Examples? Let's try that. How about this one? Sure, let's open all of them. Cool, we can pretty easily adapt this to work with React. So I'm gonna grab a terminal and I'm gonna do npm install code mirror view code mirror. All right, installing code mirror view and state. I'm gonna grab both of these things and then create a new component called editor. And um, let's just return just for now and then export. The next thing we want to do is we want to create a new view and apply it to something here that has a ref. So we're going to do a use ref equals react use ref. Of course, we need to add it, bring it to the top. 
and then uh, have a div here. Should we call it a div? Section, I think that sounds nicer. Section. Uh, ref equals ref editor. I don't think we're going to have any children there. So we'll just do that. Why is it complaining? Oh, okay. Yeah, that's because that needs to be an HTML section. What? Oh, okay. So th what they're saying is any element that doesn't need more than what the base interface provides should use a plain HTML element. That makes sense. I'm happy with that. Let's do that. That should make this disappear. Uh, this needs to be null. Next thing we want to do is we want to have a use effect, react use effect. And in this case, uh, we want to do something and we only want to do that thing when we load this element. So what is that thing that we would like to do? We would like to just make a new editor view. So let's go new editor view. And inside we have state editor state create. What is this doc? Hello. Sure. We'll just, we'll just copy that. See what happens. And parent is going to be our editor ref current not semicolon we don't want semicolons we want commas what is this what is, why is this complaining okay sure the next thing we want to do is we want to see if editor ref changes then or editor ref dot current changes the next thing we would like to do see if ref current equals null return that should clear up this thing here there we go we would like some way of accessing these properties this document well, this doc is just a string, so I'm wondering if maybe maybe every time that this doc gets updated, we can just lock it. Is that possible? Yeah, I think this is exactly what I need. Is I don't need to know exactly every time something changes. I just need to know every time I press the run button, I can just read the text, run it, and that's it. So we'll have a function here that we'll use in our parameters. So we'll have, or our props, we'll have type editor type, oh, edit, editor props. And then in that props, we'll have get state, which will be a function that returns type of editor view state. Oh, not editor, not editor view, editor state. Is that correct? Doc, <laughs> not state. Doc, which is text. Uh, is there anything else that we need? We'll, we'll see if this satisfies our needs. So we'll just replace that with doc. Nice. All right, so we'll add this here. Oh, first we want to say this is a... Uh, React function component and oh and we want to have the editor props and inside here we want to have our get state and lastly we want to make sure that we don't have children so children never oh and we have to do uh, uh, there we go oh why is this complaining doc does not exist on type of editor state right um we can do editor state. I think this is all right. We can do that. Nice. Okay. So that, that, that is the way you do it. The next thing we want to do is now we want to pass our editor back into our strings. Uh, we don't code ref code ref. We won't need any more. Instead, we'll be passing a function called get code, which will be pretty much our evaluate code here. So get code and evaluate. So we'll do editor and then get I should call it get doc, get doc, get doc. This state doesn't actually need to be created here. It actually could be created up here. Const state equals, and then I can say get doc state dot doc. And then that's not what we want here. We want void actually, and that. There we go. So now we need to have a use state. Const doc set doc equals react. Uh, and then this is going to be null. And then our type is going to be edit editor state doc or null. And then now we have doc and set doc. Uh, we'll continue to make this evaluate code. Get doc will be get doc. And then we'll have to declare get doc up here. Const get doc. And this will contain our doc, which is our editor state doc and set doc doc. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's say let's call this something else let's call this uh rename oh no okay that's wrong new doc so uh, even though that there isn't any clash because they're in different scopes i still like setting things to different names so that if you're doing like a find then you're not accidentally picking the wrong item okay so the next thing we want to do is we want to take that doc i have no idea what it is so i'm just gonna say the code ref doesn't exist anymore so i'm not sure why i'm not getting errors already for this but we'll just say yeah let's just remove all of this and then just console log doc 
and then return. We don't even want to do anything. We just want to log these things to console. <laughs> Actually, it's going to log it to our little window here. That's going to be fun. This thing has not updated in a while. Let's see why that is. Has this exited? No, it's compiling apparently. <laughs> errors. I have to import editor from somewhere. Did that do it? It did it. Ah, how do we remove this component? So when, when we're working with use effect, we have the option to just destroy what we created whenever we are unmounting the component. So we want to return a callback function and that callback function will do one thing and one thing only, which is, ooh, we did const view, uh, view dot destroy. <laughs> We should save that. That should help clean up that error that we have generated here. Damn it. Set state and render. Ooh, I think it is this. I think it's this. This is, seems to be the culprit here. Let's just cut that out and put it here. I don't necessarily need to unmount the state whenever thing changes. So maybe after this, if it does work, I'll move the state outside. Because I think what's happening is inside here, we have get doc. And then as soon as I have this editor put here, it already calls a set state function, which is from get doc. All right, we are in business console log. Hello. And then press play and we should see something. Aha, uh -huh. okay, well, it, it worked, <laughs> but not in the way that we wanted it to. How about we'll just do doc doc to JSON. It's giving me an error. I don't want an error. Object is possibly null. If doc null, we don't even care. Return. Oh my goodness. <laughs> JavaScript heap out of memory. <laughs> <sighs> Finally, okay, we're back. Console log, hello. Just so it's different. Damn it, why did that not work? I want to hello you. I don't want to just, just hello. <sighs> we'll figure that out later. For now, um, console log hello. In here, we want to do doc to JSON and we want to re-implement our try catch block. And we want to say code is equal to this join new line. That should work. We press there, we got hello there. The thing is, for some reason, when we redo this, we don't get an updated doc. How about this? What we can do is we can remove this thing back up here again. I don't even think this needs to be in a React function. I, can, I think it just can be up here. Try that, see if it works. That worked fine, same thing as it did before, but now we want to do view state doc. Ah, can't put it there. You have to put it after. Ugh. Remove and put it here. There we go. Maybe when we destroy the view, we should uh, also destroy the doc. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do uh, get doc null. And then let's say uh, doc can be null. And then we can also go to this and we can say this can also be null. Now let's do general Kenobi. Damn. <laughs> Doesn't work. Well, first off, this thing to have seems to have a thing called to string. That's a lot more useful than to JSON, I think. Let's change that to string. I shouldn't be providing a function to pass the doc. I should be providing a function to the parent. And instead of doing get doc here, so this this actually isn't a doc. It's just an editor state. All right, set editor state, set editor state, get editor state, new state. Okay, that's that. If editor null return editor state dot doc to string. Okay, that's good. And then we do get editor state get. Okay, now we can go inside here and then get editor state and this state get editor state. I think that just about covers it. Okay, so what I did was I just went through all the things and replaced doc with uh, editor state. I think that's where my problems were coming from. Now, now it doesn't work. <laughs> Why don't I pass the view object instead of just the state? So the next thing is to do get view. Get view is a function which passes the view. No, returns void. I want to pass view editor view void null. Okay, null. And then in the parent component, view set view down here, set view. 
is this set view. There we go. Now I can, what I can do is in here, if I can say view, view, view is null, then return. Otherwise we can do view state doc to string. Oh, use state editor view. Add import statement and we can remove this line. Oh yeah, we're back. <laughs> we're back to where we started. Oh, it works. <laughs> Oh, that took forever. I can't believe how long that took me. It should not have taken that long. That's it for this video for sure. The next step is to make this thing a little prettier. And then after that, start to work on building these interactive examples that this whole website is supposed to be based on. So if you'd like to follow along with these videos, then be sure to hit that subscribe button. And of course, uh, if you liked it, press the like button.